So if I rotate around the y-axis, I would get this. My circle would be here. I'd have to walk along one axis to find it. Why? Why? So when I'm doing discs, if it's rotating around the y-axis, it's dy. If it's rotating around the x-axis, it's dx. Which means the function I'm using must be solved for y. In this case, or solved for x in that case. So really, it's just a bunch of pi r squares that I add up. Uh, so to do a specific example. Um, so we got what they want here. Um, so, let's say I have uh, a region defined by, uh, what do you got, Jeff? X squared, uh, no, sorry. Screw it, I'm just going to make it easier on myself. Uh, I think we did this already the other day, but something like this. Oops. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Okay. In the first one. Do you want to tell me anything about this? What would it look like if I graphed it? Down parabola. How do you know that? Because it would have negative x squared, correct? What are the intercepts? X intercepts? One, four. Do you want to tell me the vertex? Yeah, the vertex would be at two and a half, and then whatever the shit you get when you plug it two and a half in there. I don't really care. But. So it looks like this, yes? And I'm going to rotate around the x-axis. So here's, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, how do you get the vertex? Oh, if it intercepts at 1, 4, and the vertex is in the middle, so it's symmetric, okay. it's got to be right in the middle of 1 and 4. But is it always going to be a circle like that? Oh, well, it's parabolic. Oh, okay. Yeah, so oh, yeah, just, yeah, it looks yeah, like a parabola, yeah. Do yeah. um, you guys remember negative b over 2a is the shortcut to get the vertex? Yeah. Do you remember it comes from quadratic formula because that's the thing you add and subtract shit to? So if you know the intercepts, it's just the number in the middle? Because it's symmetric? Okay. <coughs> you do not have to draw any 3D shit. Where's my axis of rotation? Has anybody drawn this? You guys all have this drawn? And you're like, I don't take notes. Okay. Um, put your pencil. Or your pen, because I don't see your notes. You can use a pen if you want. I don't give a shit. You can use blood. Oh, no. And put it somewhere on the x-axis in here, yes? You put it on the axis. Now draw until you hit the surface. How long is that? What is it? Sorry? How long is this? Because I want to know. It's this here, right? You guys with me? It's whatever that output is, right? That's how long that radius is. So that would be, uh, I don't like this, it would be negative x squared plus 5x uh, minus 4, I think. Yes. You guys with me? It's, it's, it's deceptively simple because it literally is just put your pencil on the axis, draw until you hit a surface, and that's the radius. How long that thing is you just drew, that's the radius. So, uh, so it's equal to y, is that why? Yeah. yeah, because it's how far you go away from the center. I mean, in a circle, how would you describe the radius? Not the diameter. How would you define the diameter? So don't define it based on some other aspect. I want to know what's the definition of radius in a circle. Well, it's like, I'm kind of I agree, but, but just straight up, the radius is how far from Out. the center. The center to an edge. If I rotate this, what will be in the center? If I rotate this, what's going to be right in the center? X-axis. So the radius is how far from the center, you all agree, this is the x-axis of the center to the edge. Nothing new. Nothing new at all. If you want to, you can draw 3D to remind yourself it's just a circle, and of course the radius is how far you go out to the edge. So now I can integrate. What do I want to get integrate from to? 
where do my circles start to exist? At one, because past that, the function doesn't really exist, right? Because I only care about the first one. So from one to four, because I got to capture all the circles. And what's the uh, area of each circle? I always put my pi outside, pi r squared, right? Well, what was r? This business. So that is pi r squared h. You're just adding a bunch of little disks. Plus your thing. And that, now you have to square that, but I mean, in terms of integration, you should be really happy if that's your problem. Yes? Yeah. Please, dear God, can you use u sub on this? <laughs> What's missing? That, I, that tells me I cannot do you so. If I try to let you, what would you try to let you equal? <laughs> this stuff is du here. No, there's nothing out there. So you so will not get you there. I still have I have some people putting x's outside. If you ever put an x in front of the very in front of the interval, you are wrong. X's cannot go inside and outside of it because that's the shit I'm adding up. Does that make sense? So I'm not going to do this because we got all the. You would foil us, yes, and then you integrate it. It's easy. Polynomial. You guys with me? Okay. So now the rest of that's easy. It, it's not surprisingly what's the hardest part about any problem: setting up the function you want to work with. You guys agree? Optimization. The hardest part should have been setting up the thing. Once you got it done, you just took its derivative, set it equal to zero, and you're like, yeah. setting the damn thing up sucks. You're like, why is this guy using different cost brick? What's wrong with this? Too bad. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, so let me give you an example. And I was so busy this morning. It, it, I'll tell you why it doesn't matter that I didn't print out some handouts for this. Um, what if, yes, okay, this is perfect. You guys all agree with me? That's pretty easy. And once you get it done, you're done. That's the volume of the kind of weird ass shape I would get. It's not that weird. Is it? It's what I would call. Almost kind of like an ellipsoid. It's not a paraboloid. Don't worry about it. Okay, okay. <laughs> this looks like Illuminati show. Um, or Cypher Bill. What's in the Bill's All right. What if I took this same region, this exact same region, and I rotate around the y-axis? Two things happen. Is my region hugging the axis of rotation? No. All right. If there's something that doesn't let us do that either, if you said wash right now. I'm doing, uh, if I want to use disks, if I want to use disks, who remembers how to tell from the beginning interval d what? In this case, I have to do interval d what if I want to use disks. I have to use dy, correct? And what's the function that I'm working with? Like this, yes, yes, that's the function. I really want this to make sense. Yes? Okay. If I rotate it around here, I'm going to find my circles as I move up the y axis. Is that cool? So always, disks, whatever axis you're rotating around, if it's parallel to the x-axis, it's interval dx. If it's parallel to the y-axis, it's interval dy. So that's why disks are nice to start with. They are d, whatever the shit axis you're rotating around. What is, then what kind of a function has to go in here? What would only make, what's the only kind of function I could put in here that would make sense? It has to be a function that has what's in it? What variables? Why? So can you solve this? Can you solve this for x? No. The right answer is yes, but let me ask a better question. Do you want to solve this for x? Oh no. shit, no, you do not. You will trust me. <laughs> you could. It's possible. You don't want to. So do I want to use disks then? Disks require me to solve that for x. Because what does this need? It needs a function of y. Is that currently a function of y? So why did it work so beautifully over here? Why is this relatively easy? Because I need dx and I got a function of x. 
Over here, I need dy. I don't have a function of y, and I don't want to get it. Yeah. Can you make it uh, deliver, deliver the function? Say it. I was just messing around and I was like, maybe you can make the limits equal the function of x. Oh. Uh, there might be some stuff you could do with double integrals to make part of it easier, if that's what you're thinking about. No. Well, yeah, I guess you double integrals. We'll mm -hmm. start doing that, yeah. But let's not go there. That's so not what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we get the fundamental idea here, the fundamental problem. Oh, oh you need... Yeah, answer. I think I just remind you the last two problems we're doing in class so you can see it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Um, what was I just saying? Just saying some words. <laughs> yeah, forget about that. Um, all right. So the fundamental issue here is this method requires dy, which means I have to have a function of y, and I don't want to get that. So thank God there's another method. Do you guys remember, I don't know if I should bring this up, do you guys remember law of cosines, law of sines? Do you remember how one worked sometimes, and if it didn't, the other one worked? They kind of filled each other in? I don't know if you guys remember that. When law of sines wouldn't work, law of cosines would. They kind of work. So when disk method doesn't work, there's another method called shells. Yeah, which probably just reminds me of that movie, Devilish Man. Yeah. The three shells, I don't know. Um, so here's the idea. I can create, do you remember making little rectangles? Remember that, make little rectangles? Yeah. If I took a rectangular region and I rotate it, didn't I just make half of a shell? So like a cylindrical shell is what I'm talking about. Hold on, yeah, we're getting there. If I pick a rectangle and I rotate it the way I want to, yes, then I want to rotate this around the y-axis. So if I just rotate that rectangle around, I've stopped here just so we can see it face on. Didn't that make a, sh a cylindrical shell? Um, what's a good, like, like a tire maybe? <laughs> I don't know, what's a good, I'm trying to think. A wheel. I keep going to a blunt cake. Something with a hole in the center, yes? A washer, well, that's bad because that means washer. But it's got to be like, it's got to have uh, some kind of height to it, yes? So, how do I find my rectangle? So, so to find, if I wanted to use disks, I'd have to walk along the y axis and find my circles. How do I find my rectangle, though? Where's he sitting? Where's my rectangle sitting on what axis? X axis. X -axis. So, that would let this be dx. So when I'm using disks, I find my circles on the axis I'm rotating around. When I use shells, I find my rectangles on the perpendicular axis. So disks would need dy, shells would need dx. That's why when one works, the other one has a good chance to work. Because one of the most fundamental reasons we can't do one of the processes is I can't solve for the right letter. Thank God the other problem is, oh, well, I got you. Now, um, if I have a cylindrical shell, like this, yes? Oh, God, I really suck at drawing. It's amazing. And you're all like, yeah, we've, we've suffered the whole time. Okay, keep watching. It's pretty good for me. You guys see this on the middle's hollow? Yes? And now I'm curious what the, if I open that up, so if I, ch if I have a laser, and I chop and chop it, and then I can open it up. Doesn't it make a rectangle? Mm -hmm. Right? With a bit of a uh, thing like that. You guys, you guys see that? Like, and it's got a rectangle, yes? Okay. Um, this is, of course, 2 pi r. Yes? That's just the circumference, because they just flattened it out. You guys with me? Circumference? It's still the circumference. Maybe, maybe. And what's this? That's the height, yes? You guys can understand? Maybe? And what's this? That's the thickness. So what am I going to add up? I'm going to add up a bunch of those volumes. I'm going to add up 2 pi r h dx. 
So how tall is this rectangle? That's the height. You guys with me? So this is kind of funny. How tall is that rectangle? Yeah. What was it called? It's some, I erased it, but yeah, this is h of x. Yeah. So how tall is it? It's h of x. That's, that's, that seems appropriate for this problem. The radius is how far I've got to go to get to that. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree that the radius is here? Yes? Isn't that this? How far do I have to go to get there? So how far away is that rectangle I've drawn? It's some number on the... So what's the most general way to represent it? X. So the radius is X. And, and that's all. And then, and then what am I going from to? Where do all my rectangles live that I have to capture? So real quick, let me see how shitty I can make this picture. Uh, if I do this one, and I, and I keep going, and I add them all together. Oh, get out of there. You went too far, Jeff. And I do this one, and I add them all together. I'm going to end up with the total volume of that thing. On the back of the sheet from yesterday, I've got the, the beautiful, colorful pictures. So it's much better than I could ever hope to draw. Okay. And you're all like, that's a good thing. So I want to go from 1 to 4. So, be, so not surprised I'm going to take my 2 pi out. 1 to 4. What's R? X. X. And the height is the function. So of course I'd have to give you a function, but it would basically work like that. One really nice thing is, do you remember if I wanted to use this, I'd have to do washers because there would be, it doesn't hug it. Shells don't worry about that. Shells never worry about that. Because you just make a rectangle just where your shit exists. You don't care about where it doesn't exist. It's much more direct. All right. Yes? Um, do you use the vertex for x? Say again? Do you use the vertex for x? Or... Oh, no. The vertex really doesn't matter because I've got the function defined. Okay. I was just saying because in the middle. So I was just what do you mean? I'm sorry, oh, my rectangle? Yeah. My oh, I just I could have drawn the rectangle anywhere. I just needed a representative rectangle. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, where is that rectangle? Whatever the hell X this is. So I could have done everything based off of that rectangle. So you just draw a representative rectangle. Okay. So it's always going to be X, like unless it's given to you? Unless I've got a function that is, let's say, all right, let's say I want to, let's say I have the function, let's see, what's a good one? Um, y squared minus This would actually look like this. Right? And let's say I want to rotate it around this axis. What is that axis parallel to? So then I know I need interval dx if I want to use uh, disks. Let me say this again. Disks are awesome. Disks are always the thing you rule out. I'm rotating around something parallel to the x-axis, so I know it's interval dx. Can I get this function in, well, let me make it, I could make it a little worse. Just pretend like I can. <laughs> well, if I solve for y, doesn't it require a plus or minus? You could do it, but you need two intervals, which would suck. Do you guys agree that we don't want to solve this for y? I don't want to get a function of x. It would make it kind of worse. Are you guys in agreement? So, so, you write down what disks need. Either you use disks because you got what it needs, or you don't because you don't have what it needs. Do I have a function of x? No, I've got a function of y, yes? So I don't want to use disks. Shells are always the opposite. Right? Always. If I wanted to use disks, I would find... Uh, oh yeah, I'm rotating around here. That's right. I would find my uh, circles by walking around here, because this would be the center of each circle, correct? The rotation axis is always the center of each circle, so I walk along this and I find my circles. Shells, if I draw a rectangle, the nice thing about the rectangles is they're always parallel to the rotation axis, because now I rotate like this. And I get to start to recreate my shells, yes? How do I find my rectangle along the y-axis? This is why it's allowed to be dy. I love it. Yeah. Let me, go ahead. Yeah, we're function of y and dy and radius. And here we go. 
Yeah, so the height of this would just be this. Uh, the radius, sorry, the radius gets interesting. So how do I always find the radius? Where do I put my pencil or my pen or whatever? At the center. And then I go out. How long is that? Well, I didn't say what this was. Let me say what this is. Uh, y equals 3. Sure. So what's the biggest? How do I figure out how long something is? Don't I take the big minus the small? So it would be 3 minus y. So the radius would be 3 minus y. Where's that rectangle? Some y point, yes? How far apart is it from 3? How far is that radius? 3 minus y. It's always big minus small. Now let me say this right now before anybody else was running screen. I'm going to make 66 to be extra credit. I didn't want to tell you that earlier because then you wouldn't have paid any attention. So I had to trick you. Uh, Please try out 6263. I'm going to put a problem like that in the bonus part on the final. The funny thing about 6263 is it's really interesting. It's a beautiful example of how I can use. Do you all agree with me that the function, the stuff we set up, how many dimensions is this? Which really is how many variables this is care about. One. This cares about one variable, correct? It is a single dimension, but what is the shape that it's talking about? Three dimensional. So that's Cool. I mean, we have a 1D equation that's representing a 3D object that happens in a few different places in mathematics. That's why I wanted to kind of like put this in your brains. This specific process only becomes uh, uh, important if you go into certain kinds of engineering. You guys might kind of get that idea. Don't you want to sometimes engineer something that's got symmetry around an axis and then you want to kind of figure out what the equations are and so forth? And you can use something related to this. Of course, this would be built into your software, so. But as an engineer, you should show, you should know what the hell your software's doing, right? Okay. So does everybody understand what just happened? 6263, extra credit. There will be one question on the bonus section of the uh, final that will be related to that. So if you do it, you can get that, lots of those points. I understand right now, if you're out there going, oh, I'm not gonna do that at all, I understand. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. Um, so if, I, I didn't want to go too much deeper into this because of the fact that I'm going to make an extra credit anyway. But if you're more interested in more about this, then obviously just come see me office hours tomorrow, whatever. Or just whenever, if I can tell you. Or if you want to get the handouts that I would give out if I had time, I can give those to you. Yeah. Will you include the formula for showing Yeah, you just got to memorize it. So pi r squared is easy. 2 pi r h. Real quick. Uh, what's the area of a circle? And what's the derivative of that with respect to r? 2 pi r, yes. And, and very quickly, this is relative to, and this is not related to discs and washers, just go with me. Um, I'm going to take all this away, yes. And we're going to transition to review for the final. Um, Real quick, real quick, just because I didn't get a chance to talk about this. So here's a circle. It's got a radius of r. It's not really happy. Well, it's got a little tongue going. Um, the area is pi r squared. If I put tape on the outside of the circle, would you all agree that the area got a little bigger? I mean, just the, isn't the tape have some kind of a thickness to it? Um, if I put a piece of very thin tape around the outside, Isn't it, what's the, what's the, the length of that tape? It's basically 2 pi r. So how much will the area change if I go out just a little bit more? Yeah. dA would be 2 pi r dr. Yeah. So it's kind of neat that the derivative of the area of a shape it's very often related to the surface area of the shape. So for example, the volume of a sphere is this. Does anyone know that? What's the derivative of this with respect to r? What's the derivative? The 3 comes down and kills this 3, yeah? So 4 pi r squared dr. This is the surface area of a sphere. Surface of a sphere. Yeah. 
us to have a meeting together later, each month. Anyway, anyway, sorry, just just a little aside. Um, there wasn't enough time this semester for many asides, but oh well. So now let's fully transition into uh, review for the final. So we could do uh, questions from the practice final, questions from any test, any quiz, any homework, general questions like, can we do a problem like this? And we'll all see if Jeff can make one up on the spot. Mm. Um, 2D on the practice final. 2D. <laughs> All right, let me transition up here. What am I asking you to do on 2D? Derivative. Derivative, good. And what kind of function do I give you? Uh, I don't care, not really. Uh, that's not the function I give you, no? And Kevin's like, dude. Yeah, my balls job. I'm worried about you, man. No, no, that's not the function I'm integrating. I'm, I'm sorry, differentiating. I sort of gave it away. I really want you guys to understand. Uh, what kind of function is it in 2D? my variable in 2D? X. X. T is not my variable. How can I always tell my variable? What's the function of? When does F change if I change X? So this shit is given to me. I have a function that exists. Whatever the hell it looks like, it is, it is there. If I change something, it doesn't change. It is just itself. What am I changing is how far do I go? So if I go further, sorry, if I go further, I pick up more area. Yes? So I'm changing how far I go on this given function. Am I allowed to change the function? No. So this is an integral function. How do I take the derivative of an integral function? What tells me how to do that? If talk. Would. Yes. So on one level, it should make nothing but sense that the derivative of an antiderivative should just cancel. Yes? So if I do the derivative of this function, the interval symbol should basically just disappear. That would have been great if that would have been time. Oh, did you do it? Okay. Um, so I should still have a, something with t there. I should have a coach of shit. Yes, the, those should be there. So they, they should just cancel each other. But what's the trick when you do the derivative of this? Does anyone remember? There's, Yeah, so the, and just to kind of show you one more time, um, do you all agree that if I take the n, let's call this, let's call this g. Wouldn't it be g of t if I took the antiderivative and I would evaluate, but I'd never do what I'm about to do. I'm just showing you why the shortcut works. So we're only going to do the shortcut, so just watch me. Isn't it evaluated from, what is it, negative 2 to x squared? So wouldn't this be g of x squared minus g of negative 2? And that would be what f prime, I'm sorry, that would be f of x is, yes? Now, on one level, this is uh, not satisfying because I didn't actually integrate. I just sort of, so that's little g, so the big g is the antiderivative. Ah, but it's because what am I about to do? I'm about to take that freaking derivative. So, of course, I'm not going to actually do the integral because it would just cancel, wouldn't it? So, what's the derivative of this? What's the derivative of big ass g? You can do it. Where big ass g come from? Where big ass g come from? Little g. So what's the derivative of big ass g? Little g. Times what rule comes in? Chain rule. And what's the, what's what is this? What kind of thing is this? It's a number. So what's its derivative? Beautiful. Okay. Now, so then I would just plug an x squared into this shit. That's where the the shortcut comes from. So if I have this function. So here's how you do this directly. F prime would be the function evaluated at x squared 
That's the first level. That's the direct derivative of an integral is the integral cancels and you throw the stuff in. But then what rule comes into play? The rule doesn't give a shit that this is an integral function. It just says if your inside is more than x, you've got to take its derivative. Change. So this would be 2x times x squared, 2x cubed. Cos x, oh, cos. Do I put a plus c? No, because what did I actually just do? Did I integrate? No, I took a. So of course there's no plus c. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It. I could even. Uh, let me see. What do I want to put in? Sure. All right. What? What's the integral of from a to uh, x cubed of 4x times the gamma function of x. Do you guys know this function? No, so I'm just showing up. I know gamma. Who gives a shit? It's just a function you guys don't know. But what's the rule say? If I want to take this guy's derivative, what's the rule say? You, you don't have to know what the function is, right? Yeah. What's the rule say? I'm sorry. Make these t's. I'm too excited about gamma. Yeah, you plug that in. Gamma of x cubed times 3x squared. Do you have to know what that is? No, because you're not going to do anything with it. It wants you to integrate it, but then we're going to differentiate it. So why would I do anything with it? Those two kill each other. So if I, I'm not going to, but if I wanted to, I could put some funky ass shit in there because it doesn't change. I'm going to undo what the integral wanted to do. So nothing's going to change with it. Just the only thing that changes is What's it evaluated at? It's evaluated at the variable part. Yes? Um, if the top row is a function, do the curves still count as the derivative of the function, or would it count as the derivative? So real quick, real quick. I, I want to make sure I understand your question, because it could be a really good trick question that I'm not going to give you. If I said, take the derivative of this. Um, like, what if like, the bottom is x? OK, there you go. Well, real quick, let me finish that. If I said, take the derivative of this. Does anyone know what the answer is? You, you, you don't have to do any damn work. What's the derivative of this? You can do it. Zero. Zero. Of course it's zero, because what kind of thing would you get from this? A number, yes? OK, OK, I'm sorry. So that's not what you meant, whoever I was talking to. Oh, yeah. So if it was this instead. Right? What's the very first thing I need to do to put it in the correct form? Negative. Yeah, negative, because then I can flip these. Sin, blah, blah, blah. Yes. And then what's its derivative? Negative cinch of natural log of. X minus cube root of X, done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I forgot where cinch comes from again. Where does it come from? Oh, it, so is that section 311? It's e to the ix plus e to the negative ix over 2, or is it minus over 2? So hyperbolic trig functions, we discussed that they exist. And they're based on exponentials. Which is why the derivatives are really nice. Because what's the best function to take the derivative of besides a constant? E to the something, right? How much do you have to understand hyperbolic? Didn't I make that section? Yeah. Okay. Right? What we talked about is there. Yes? Why did you not do the chain rule on this one that you did on one before? What's the inside function here? Natural log. X. What is this a function of? X. So what's the inside function? X. So why would I do chain rule? I mean, the chain rule would be times x prime. Is what? Well, the last problem is Certainly. Maybe if I can find it. Oh, here. Like this one? Yeah. What was the inside function? So of course chain rule says you got to multiply by its derivative. Uh, inside function is x cubed. So I have to multiply by its derivative. <coughs> What's the derivative of x? Oh, good God, yes. What's the derivative of x? One. One, yeah, so it doesn't show up. It doesn't show up, yeah. Yeah, okay.
Let's not spend too much time on that, because I'm not going to give you a bunch of problems like this, yes? But that's all there is to it, is you throw that in, and you multiply by its derivative. That's the rule for derivative of integral. Yeah. Do you have a separate question? Yeah, did you have a question about... Um, can you go over 2a, just like the little plots again? And then you wanted to talk about what, Christian? Uh, I was going to ask you if you could do a difference, a little proposal for a difference of integrals. All right, so I'll do that next. Okay. Uh, 2a, it's a really smart idea to do like you're saying. The derivative of the way it's written, can you guys see how that would be horrendous? How many levels of chain do I have there? I have x squared minus x inside of a cube, inside of a natural log, yeah? So there's a little Russian nesting doll thing going on. If you have a natural log, you have properties of logs. And the most immediately useful property of logs I could use here is what? Who knows what they can do with this shit? Yeah, the power can come out front. Does that immediately make it better? Now the x squared minus x is only inside of a natural log. It's not also inside of a cube, right? You can do even better. Can you factor the inside? And what's the natural log of x times x minus 1? And now that derivative is easy as shit, yes? The derivative would be... 3 over x plus 3 over yeah, and you're done. Yeah, you're done. Yay. Do you have to um, separate the addition? No, you don't. You, you don't even have to do it. You can just take the derivative as it is. The only thing wrong with that is you're doing more work than you have to. But you could totally not change this. You could just take its derivative. You have a chain inside of a chain. But it would work. <clears throat> but what do I keep saying? What is the thing I said the most in this class besides um, probably? <laughs> simplify, yeah. So there's rules of logs that will help me simplify this, which will make the calculus I have to do easier. That was the first thing you did, was the rule of logs, right? Yep. So you have the three on front. Yeah, so everything I did here was F, 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 and then I tell myself when I take a derivative. This is F. F prime. It's trying to be poor little F dude. All right, who did I? Skip? What's up, Christian? Uh, the Lopicol's uh, forms are a ratio of infants, a ratio of zeros, a mixed ratio, a product, a determinate product, and a determinate sum, right? Then so these are all indeterminate forms here. Um, Isn't there a zero times infinity? Yeah, zero times infinity. Yeah, but you can immediately make that into this or this. Right. Okay. Zero times. Those are all indeterminate. Um, yeah. So the thing I, I think we've seen the most that wasn't just one of these two was either this one or this one. Right. Yeah. yeah. So like this is when I do something like this. Uh, uh, what do you got, Jeff? Let me do it, brother. You don't want the test. Oh, which one is that? Minus eight kind of natural log. Right? Oh yeah. Well, all right. That one is what form is this in? Zero times infinity. Yeah, zero times infinity. Negative eight. infinity, right? Why am I approaching eight from the right? Because the domain of natural log is only really is only above eight. eight. Yeah. So I can't approach eight from the left. It would it would die immediately, right? You guys said that with me? So at the moment, this is in the form of zero times negative infinity. Zero times anything is zero. Anything times infinity is infinity. So zero times infinity is both zero and infinity. So the reality is it's somewhere in the middle. It could be either of those or something in the middle. Does anyone remember how to rewrite this so that Lope what what's the only form L'Hopital's worse on? Directly. A ratio. I can make a ratio out of any damn thing. And in fact, some of you guys, what do you do to get around quotient rule? Don't you force the bottom up, right? Well, let me force something on the top down. I can do the same exact thing. So it's negative infinity over negative infinity? 
No, no, so, real quick. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah uh, no, it would be uh, 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 negative infinity over, yeah, infinity, yeah. Okay. I lost one. So how can I re, <clears throat> re oh, oh yeah. yeah. So many guys, tell me what you do if if you have to take this guy's derivative. Some of you guys rewrite this as x squared plus one times x minus one to the so anytime, anytime you take something from one side and you move it to the other, it has to have a negative power on it to remind people I want to be on the other side. I'm not happy. It's, look how happy it is now. This all happened. Then you force it and you're like, I don't like it. <laughs> so here, if I rewrite this as, <clears throat> if I force this down below, what's it going to be to the power? Negative one. Negative one. Or you could write it as one over x minus eight on the bottom, correct? Okay. And now can L'Hopital's rule work? Yeah, because as x goes to eight, this goes to negative infinity, and this goes to infinity, because it's one over zero. Yes? I mean, yes, x goes to 8. Do you all agree this is 0 to the negative 1, which is 1 over that's approaching infinity, and this is approaching negative infinity? That is an indeterminate form. It's a ratio, so L'Hopital's will work. Yeah? Um, I did confuse the thing with ratios because I put like 1 over, I would have put 1 over. Yeah, I, I said you could write it. I was just trying to make it immediately the same as the way some of you guys do uh, quotient rule to make it into a product. But I could have written this. I could have written this like this. Yeah, that's what yeah, I Same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. Just, I know some of you guys are cool with just moving it and putting it to a negative power. So anytime you move something from top to bottom or vice versa, it has to now be to a negative power. Because it doesn't like what you did. It's like, I was happy up top. Obviously, you can't just put the x minus 8 on the bottom. Just whole set, just put it on there, because now you've made multiplication become division. And that's some, like, next level shit. That's some so hard words. Take the derivative of that and set? The derivative what do you mean? Say it better. You know that little works. Totally. So I take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. Yes. Because some of you guys still do like quotient rule, which is insane. L'Hopital's rule is not asking for the derivative of that function. L'Hopital's rule says the limit of a ratio is equal to the limit of the ratio of the derivatives. So the derivative of the top independent from the derivative of the bottom. Yes. Is that good? Huh? No. Yes. So this is in an indeterminate form. Check. L'Hopital's works. So what do you get? One over x minus one over one. Yeah. Square. Yeah. That's why it might be better to write it as x minus eight to the negative one, because then it's really in your face. Huh? Oh sure. Yeah. Uh, we go over yeah, just a second. Dividing by a fraction, same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. reciprocal. So then you get x minus 8 squared over x minus 8. Is that cool? Multiply top by x minus 8 squared. So one of these cancels. When you throw an 8 in, you get So it's not, if you get zero as the answer because you said zero times something is zero, you're wrong. You don't know. Because it's zero times infinity. The answer could have been anything between zero and infinity. That's why we do this, because we don't know. By the way, I mean, this is on the practice file, so it's on my answer. So. Let's do this before I forget, because I'm seriously going to forget. Let's do the last two problems on the practice file because I didn't put those in the key. Number 12 and 13. And of course, 13 is four problems, which is great. Uh, so let's see. You guys, 
if anybody's tried this and needs help, just tell me. But we're going to kind of pretend like we did part A and B because I sort of did already. Is everybody with me? I'm going to do the exact same thing on the final. Yes, I would give you the factored form so you could just, if you have any trouble with the derivative, you could still do the rest of it. What my favorite thing is when somebody does this and then suddenly the answer appears. And you're all like, don't look at it too close, Jeff. Come on. Okay. I like how some of you guys are grinning because you're done. Um, you don't know what I'm talking about. I like you. You're awesome. You're doing it right. Is everybody cool with that? If, if somebody wants to see how this derivative works, just tell me. Or else I'm going to start at part B. Yes. Yes. Okay. See how that worked? That's easy. Uh, all right. So let's look at this. What was the first step in this guy's derivative? Of it? Radical. I love it. So what do I get? Yeah, the 3 comes down. Pass it around. This goes down to 2. 3 comes down. Pass it around. 2 is left of the exponent. And then plus... Leave the first dude alone. What's the derivative of the second dude? Yeah, you're the real MVP, second dude. Now, this is where people freak out. Is that factored yet? So I can't get set equal to zero and get answers yet because it's not factored yet. What is staring you in the face that's common to both pieces? Yeah, how many of, yeah, I can take out two of these, yes? So what's left in the first term? 3x minus 4. And what's left over here? One x plus two. You guys with me on that? Now, real quick, what's the answer supposed to be? The answer supposed to be this. Does, does this look at all like this yet? And that's this is where you guys go, man. I'm gonna stop because it ain't looking like. Keep going. It, it, again, I don't know how many times it's gonna, it ain't gonna look like it's supposed to until you're done. Yes. So let's see. This shit I can't do anything with. We're gonna do it here. 3x plus x. Y'all cool with this? Negative 12 plus 2. What comes out of here? 2. And what's left? 2x minus 5. Is that what past Jeff got? Good job, past Jeff. You guys all right with that? It will not look the way I've shown you until you are basically done. So don't think you're on the wrong track. You could be on the wrong track, but don't think you're on the wrong track just because it doesn't look the way it, I showed it. Okay, I like it. And then the second derivative, second derivative, I can start wherever I want to in this chain because these are all the first derivative. Uh, you could even start here if you wanted to, but if I start here, let's just do that. So I'm going to rewrite the first derivative. How do I do this guy's derivative? Right, right, right. So the two comes down plus leave the first dude alone. What's the derivative of this guy? That's crazy. What can come out? Do you see how this is four? So four comes out and x plus two. Is that cool? They both have an x plus 2. So what's left? 2x minus 5 plus x plus 2. So then you get 4x plus 2, 3x minus 3. And then you can factor out a 3. x minus 5. Now, in both of these, you can, you can just see the critical number staring you in the face, correct? What's the critical numbers here? What are these the possible locations of? Considering it comes from the first derivative, right? So the possible locations of min and x. Because they are where the derivative is zero. They are where the tangent line is horizontal. 
that could be a max or a min. Why could it not be? Because maybe it goes horizontal and then it keeps going. So it's not a max or a min. Okay. Will that register as a max or a min when we have a, a zero immediately followed by more of the same concavity that preceded it? Say all that again, sorry. I think I said it right. Um, would you register a zero, a uh, min max, whatever you want to do one, for a function that precedes itself? It's going up to zeros, it goes back right up. So that, that would still be a critical number, but it wouldn't be a max or min. Like execute the zeros flat. Yeah. So, that's so there's a critical number of zero, but it's not a max or min. It's not a max or min. Exactly. Okay. Good. Because it doesn't change direction. It's positive on one side and then it's positive on the other side, yeah. Okay. So can you guys take a moment, make this on a diagram, and I'll catch up to you? Oh, uh, Jacob. Anybody else come in and but not get their test back yet? Oh, that's weird. Um, okay. Any homework I give you that doesn't say anything, it's considered good unless they say it's missing, in which case you didn't do enough for me to count. Right. So I'm going to put a negative 2 and a 5 halves, with 0 at both of those. How do I proceed? Here's what I would do. Zero is in here, correct? Positive times negative is negative. Multiplicity of two, so around negative two, it's going to stay the same sign. Multiplicity of one, so around five halves, it's going to change signs. Now, you don't want to do it that way. You just put in like seven, zero, and negative 12, or whatever the hell. You just need a number from each, and you plug it in to see what the sign of the derivative is. So it's like it's going down or up, right? Multiplicity. So around negative 2 doesn't look like a problem, which means at negative 2 it's going to turn. So it's going to stay the same sign around negative 2. What's the problem, Jim? If it's negative on one side and it touches, it's still negative on the other side, correct? Concavity? It's not concavity. It's because around negative 2 it looks like a problem. Are you talking about values for f of x or f of x? What are we making a sign diagram for? Oh, F prime. Yeah. Okay. Do you have to use multiplicity? No. If I plug in a 10, you all agree 10 is up here? Positive times positive times positive is positive. If I plug in a negative 10, positive times positive times negative is negative. Is that cool? You don't have to use multiplicity. Yeah. So what does this tell me? Can anyone tell me anything this tells me? Is there a max or a min? What do we have? Do we have a max? We have a min. We don't have any max, yes? How do you know that? You wizards, what's up? Down, flat, down, flat, up. So I know this is going to be a min, yes? And there's no max, because there's no up and then down. Yes? Is I thought the negative two is a um, max because I thought that the negative ten was a uh, slope positive. No, no, definitely not. You agree with me? This is always positive. Negative ten plus two is negative eight squared is positive. Negative twenty minus five is negative. Yeah, yeah. So it's negative. Yeah. So there's a min at five halves. How do I figure out the rest of that point? Do I plug it in here? Because I'd always get zero if I plug it in here, right? That's where it came from. I want to know where the function is, so I have to plug it back in the original. So what do you get when you plug it back in the original? I don't know. It's so you can plug a five halves in there. Five halves plus two. It's nine halves. Cubed, oh my god. 27 eighths times 1.5. 
We have 81 eighths. Is it like 10? I'm trying to do too much in my head. Is anybody doing that? I love you guys. You know what? Let's just watch this kid try to do some. All right. Uh, do you all know how to do that? If you don't, that sucks. Can you plug a five halves into this function for me? Anybody? It's okay if you don't get what I got because I, I, I don't know. I got lost in my head. Do it again. Do it again. Sorry. I'll show you guys a trick. You ready? I'll show you a trick. So, how many of you guys know about this button right here? So watch, watch this shit. You ready? Five divided by two. That's the thing I'm trying to plug in, right? I'm going to store it. I'm going to store it in X. And then, all I have to do is, is I can put exactly this in. So I'm going to put exactly that in. Parenthesis, x plus 2 to the third times x minus 4. Because what does x have in it? 2.5. Isn't that a cool little trick? So that I get something nowhere near what I got in my head. Which is fine. I'm fine with that. I'm so fine with that. So negative 137 roughly, negative 136.7 we'll say. Is everybody with me? Okay. Okay, so, uh, and where is it decreasing? I mean, this should be relatively easy. Is it decreasing from negative infinity to five halves? Why not? It definitely is not. Negative infinity to negative two, negative two to five halves. Yeah, it just takes a rest here. It's going, ah, oh God, ah, yeah, so it takes a rest at negative two. Where's it increasing? Five halves to infinity, so it's forever going up after that. All right, I already kind of know what it looks like. It looks something like that. So I already know the shape of it. This is a polynomial, so it's not going to do anything too freaky. Okay. What, what can I investigate with this guy? Concavity. I love it. So the funny thing is, the process stays the same. So the way I would do this again is I'd throw a zero in, positive, positive, negative. Multiplicity is odd on both, so it changes signs around both. If it's an even power, it stays the same sign. If it's an odd power, it changes sign. Yes? Uh, so concavity is where the slope is increasing? Concavity talks about, yeah, how quickly the slope itself is increasing or decreasing. Yeah. So it's my, what's my acceleration tell me? If I accelerate, what's changing? My velocity. And of course, my velocity relates to how quickly my position is changing. Yeah? Okay, okay. So what does it look like down here? Cup up. Cup down, cup up. So how many inflection points are there? Good, because it changes sign around each. If it doesn't change sign, in the first derivative, if it doesn't change sign, it's not a max derivative. If it doesn't change sign in the second derivative, it's not an inflection point. So it's all about, does it actually change some fundamental thing about itself? If it doesn't, no. If it does, yay. So my inflection points would be negative two comma something. And the nice thing is, what was the original function? What do you get when you put a negative 2 in? I don't need to do any weird calculator shit. Zero. And what's the other inflection point? 1, comma. Let's see, that would be 27 times negative 2, negative 81. Jeff's brain works sometimes. Okay. Yes? Can you explain how you do the set the two, or how you know how many inflection points are in there? Oh, how many times does the concavity change? Where? And negative two and one, correct? So therefore, those are the locations of the inflection point. Okay, inflection so okay. point means concavity is changing. Oh, okay. Yeah. What does a max or a min mean? It means the, the increase-decrease is changing, correct? 
If I go from increasing to decreasing, that is a max. So this is a beautiful, the work is the same, and the interpretation is very similar. That's why I love this such a beautiful analogy between investigating F prime versus F double prime. Right? Yes? And then you plug in the negative two. And yeah. Anytime I want to know where the function is, I gotta plug it back into the function itself. Okay. Yeah. So if you're trying to figure out a point that the function goes through, you have to use the original function. I don't want to know what the slope is, I don't know what the concavity is, I want to know where the hell the function is. How are we all doing out there? So everybody got what they want written down from this. So now we're going to try to graph this thing. Let me make sure I haven't missed anybody. What else did I ask? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. How do you find the intercepts? What are the x-intercepts for this guy? Yeah, I guess that won't be too pedantic about it. Negative 2, 0, 4, 0. What, what's the y-intercept? How do you find the x-intercept? You make y. How do you find the y-intercept? You make x here. Yeah. If I had an equation with 13 letters in it and I said, what is the w-intercept? I would make all the other variables zero. It's a beautiful idea. It doesn't matter how many variables are there. If you want an intercept, you make all the other letters zero. So what do we got? We got two letters. Beautiful. Eight times negative four is? Isn't it, aren't these multiplying? So when you play zero and you get eight times negative four? Negative 32. Is that right? That's it. It's one of the most single-minded stuff in all of mathematics is how to find an intercept. You just make all the other letters zero. It's, it's kind of crazy. It never changes. Sorry. There's a class where we did like 27 dimensions. So we had 27 x's. And I want to know what the W intercept was. It just made all the other letters zero. So that part of the work was great. The rest of it was weird shit. Um, got my intercept. So that, that so I've got what this one, and now I can try to graph. So let me, let me summarize all the shit we discovered. Uh, we found a minimum at five halves, negative 136.7, right? We found inflection points at negative two, zero, and one, negative 81. You with me? So, dear God, do I want my y-axis scale to go by ones? I don't want to see, if I see this on your test, you are going to lose points. You're going to lose a lot of points because that came from your graph, your calculator, and you just didn't go high enough up on the y-axis. That's what that means. Do you understand what I mean? You copied this from your graph, from your calculator. There's no way you would do this in real life. You just copied it. You just didn't go far enough up on the y-axis, right? You didn't see where it turned. So, so you know, if you start drawing this, go, oh shit, at least make the y max thicker, right? Make it harder for me to tell. That's your Can you use like a little squiggly line? Huh? Can you use like a little accordion sign? No, nope, nope, your scale has to be consistent. Okay. So can somebody tell me, looking at the things we have to graph, what kind of scale I might want to use on my x-axis? Are the x's freaky? How far do the x's go? The farthest they go is four, yes? So I can use scale of one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, that's plenty far enough. All right, the x's are nice. All the x values that have interesting things happening live within what I've given it, yes? What about my y-axis scale? 50, yeah, 50, 100, 150, that's maybe a little too chunky. It doesn't matter though. I, I'm gonna, if we do 40, it'd be 40, 80, 120, 160. You guys kind of follow? Yeah, it, yeah, okay, let's just do that. Negative 40, negative 80, negative 120, negative 160, 40, 80, 120, 160, okay. So one basic thing you need to be able to do is to get a good scale. How do you figure out a good scale? Well, just see the biggest and smallest stuff you have to handle, right? 
So let's plot some stuff. I know my intercepts, those are nice. I can just, those are beautiful. You gotta love them. They're just points that sit there. You're like, thank you, you're awesome. Line intercept is zero, negative 32, which is about right there, maybe. Then I've got my minimum is two and a half, negative 136, which is roughly there. We're doing this by hand, so it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Let me stop. You guys all with me? The great thing is, once I get my scale set up, plotting the points is easy. It's just connecting them correctly that gets a little freaky. Uh, then I got my inflection points. One of them is already here, so I'm going to label this IP, IP freely. And I'm going to put a little min underneath this dude. And the only other thing I have to graph is what? What have I not graphed yet? Yeah, the other IP is 1, negative 81. I love you. So I'll put a little hockey. Okay. So what gets me started? Can somebody tell me what the initial over here? What's the initial uh, slope? Negative. Yeah, the initial slope is negative, and my initial concavity is up. So I want to be coming down at this point with a negative slope, but concave up. So basically like this. What happens? What changes right there? How do I, because I labeled this IP, so I'm being nice to myself because the math is already evil. I don't think that really, but I'm just trying to channel what you guys might be thinking. So now I'm going to be concave down. How long am I concave down for? Until I get to the next IP, right? So now I'm going to be concave down through here. Until I get to this, and now what happens? Now I'm concave up. And I'm concave up forever after that. And, and this will, do you guys see how this will connect really nice? So I'm concave up now. So normally what I do in that case is I do like this, so I really make it clear that I'm concave up. And I just really got to be careful here. This is why it's good to do this with pencil. You really got to be careful, because I see some of you guys doing stuff like this. Do you see, do you see how I'm going to take a point off? Because what have you told me is happening there? You told me that something changed to concave down. Is it supposed to? No. no. So you might think that's just me being an asshole, uh, uh, but no, that's me being great in you on what you're supposed to know. It should only change concavity at the IP. So you have to be really careful. Really good idea to use pencil for two reasons. One, so you can erase that, and two, because I told you you need to. That's a really, really, really good reason. Is that all right? And the ultimate great thing is, dear God, don't do this before you've gotten something graphed. You can now check it in your calculator. If you see something wrong, don't just change it. See if you can figure out what you did wrong. If you cannot figure out what you did wrong, don't change the graph. I'd much rather have a graph that's wrong because it's based on your work than a graph that's right, but it's not matching your work. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, just, you know, don't do that. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so the other thing that wasn't on the answer key is number 12, which refers to these three problems. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember what they even were about. Sorry. 479. Here we go. Number eight. Oh, is this a... Uh, wait a minute, let me see. Are these rotations? Are these what that's? It might be. In which in which case, I've decided to make that extra credit. So, I did not bring my glasses. That sucks. Oh, well, too bad for Jeff. Um, number what was it? Number eight. Okay, the projector could be my glasses. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So these would be extra credit anyway, right? Number eight, number 10, and number 16, I think I said. Yeah. Those are extra credit. Those are the rotations, right? So what I could do, if somebody reminds me, if anybody wants to see those because you're planning on trying the extra credit out on the, on the final exam, email me, remind me, I can like create a answer key and then put a scan of it up on Canvas, right? I just don't want to take class time to talk about what's going to be bonus. 
I want to focus on the meat of it. Yeah. Is everybody with me? So that number, the last one on the practice final, would be extra credit on the final because I made six two six three homework extra credit. Yeah. Number ten. Okay. So now we can just talk about whatever the hell you want to talk about. Um, oh yeah, okay, beautiful, perfect, 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 perfect. See how this one's kind of by himself? This little interval is by himself. Look at all these other happy intervals up here, and then asshole Jeff uh, just put this guy all by himself. And I did that for a reason. There is something wrong with this from the beginning. Not just it's an interval I don't want to do because it looks weird, but can anyone identify what what are the limits of this interval? A two five. Is the function cool in that region? No. Does it have a spot where it goes crazy? In fact, what happens at negative one? What does this function do? Don't just say define. Where does it go? The bottom goes to zero, so the whole thing goes to infinity. So this is uh, what we call an improper interval. It has an undefined spot, and it's uh, so you can't do this. There are improper intervals you can do, and that you will study in Calc two if you take Calc two. But I just want to make a point because I think there's at least one problem in the homework that had this happen. You got to make sure that the function you're working with is defined for all the inputs you're supposed to use. That kind of generally makes sense. So this, I, you could just say I can't do it. The official name is improper. Don't okay. you integrate the infinity when you have that kind of thing? Say again? You set up a parts. You can do it by parts. You set up a limit as, limit as a goes to infinity yeah. and put an a in. Yes. But for this specific one, it actually would just go to infinity anyway. Yeah. Because it goes to, like, you know. You don't want to do a Some, some uh, intervals, for example, um, no, I don't want to spend a bunch of time on this. Some integrals have inputs that go to infinity, but the actual area is not infinite. So that's part of what you'll study in Calc 2. All we have to know is if there's a place where it's undefined, you currently can't handle it. But there is a process that you'll learn in Calc 2. Well, it was related to that, yeah. Uh, oh, I have no idea who's with you. Um, can you do it if it's from 0 to 5? Oh! The only problem was negative one, correct? Yeah. So if it was zero to five, then you could do it. Yeah. And are you asking me to do it? Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's pretend, because this does look like one I would give you. What if it was from zero to five? So let me rewrite this. Uh, zero to five. All right, any guesses, holy crap, any guesses on what to try here? Double substitution. I mean, substitution, and again, can anyone see the general idea we talked about earlier? If only the bottom was a single term. So let me force it to be a single term. Let u equal t plus 1. No, 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 t squared doesn't work. Okay. I mean, this is beautiful. Check it. What's the derivative of t squared? Two t, like t, right? Is there a t in there? Nope. There is a one over t plus one, right? So I can't let u equal t squared because there's no t in there to be its du. Because it's on the bottom. It's not t, it's one over t should. Yeah. So that's why I can't, if it would have been t squared down there and t up there, do you guys see that? If that would have been squared and that was the derivative of t squared is 2t, there would be a t. Yay! Okay, maybe. So one way to do this is to do this. What's du then? dt. But what can I say about what's t? u minus 1. Okay, so what goes up top then? U minus 1 squared. What goes on the bottom? U. 
Uh, what's DT? DU. And why have I left this blank? Because I don't know what it is yet. When T is 0, what's U? 1. And when T is 5, what's U? Now, how do you do this? The bottom is a single term. That means it should be easy. What do I do to the top? Coil it out. And then I can divide each piece by U, right? And then it just becomes a beautiful power rule several times. Yes? I, I changed the bottom to be zero. So does it go, does it have negative one? So, so the beginning problem had a negative two here. From negative two to five, there's a negative one. The question was, what if that would have been a zero? Is negative one in this region? So this is fine then. So again, the original problem went from negative two to five. Does that include an input of negative one? From negative two to five, does that include an input of negative one? Yes. If I start at zero instead, does that include an input of negative one? Is this function defined everywhere on, in my limits? So I can do it. The reason I could not do this one is because the interval would require me to have an input that makes this undefined. Yeah. Yes? I really want to screw things up here. What if uh, we use negative one as our bottom limit? Oh, that gets interesting. Yeah. That has the same kind of problem. If I showed you that kind of problem in here, we would say not doable. Yeah. But that would be an example of a problem that might have something that works in Calc 2. Yeah. yeah, we just don't talk about the process, but it's, yeah. yeah. Sure. I'll give it to you at a normal pace. There you go. Um, how did you get 6 and 1 again? Oh, what did we define u to be? Uh, so when t is 0, because doesn't t go from 0 to 5? So when t is 0, what's u? And when t is 5, u is 6. You guys see that? Yes. U set up what u equals. So then you can just transform the t shit into u shit. Yeah. If I still had a t here, I made a mistake. Maybe I picked the wrong thing to let u equal. I cannot go forward. Everything here is t, yeah? Everything here is u. That means it'll work. If there was still a T here, I couldn't do shit. Because that's multivariable and we're not in multivariable calculus. That's calc 3. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you guys okay with the rest of that? That wasn't really a problem we had, but if you want to finish this out, we can. Yeah. We're good? Because you just spoil it out, divide, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Mm -hmm. By the way, you can't put that on the test. You said to say blah, blah, blah. You know, no, stop. <laughs> that's what you said. Keep going. Yeah. Number seven. Seven. Oh, good. All right. Seven. Everybody's favorite problem. Right? Yay. Look at me be nice. Well, what is it that I bolded? I bolded what it is that I tell you, and I bolded what it is that I ask you. Yes? So rectangular guard, so draw that. Yay! So let's see, overhead of our garden. How long do you want it to be? X. X? And how tall you want it to be? Y. That's crazy shit. So then this is Y, this is X, yes? Okay. So what it is what it is? It is what it is. Tell, what is it that they tell me? They would tell me the area is 108. So what's the area of the picture I just drew? Five times one. And that's supposed to be one away. So that's, that's beautiful. Look for what they tell you. So when I say a problem, a word problem, and I say the word maximize, minimize, least, most, biggest, smallest, that's an optimization. What did I tell you? What am I asking you? Just like on the test, sometimes what I tell you could be visual. It could be your rectangle is supposed to live within this graph. That's what I tell you. Okay. What do I ask? What are we asked to do here? 
Cost. Okay, so now I focus all of my attention. That's not cosine t, by the way. I focus all my attention on setting up a function that represents cost. Because I cannot find the minimum cost until I get a function that represents cost. Then I can take its derivative. I'm like eating this function up. Psh, tell me. You guys follow what I'm saying? So if I know what they want me to minimize or maximize, I focus all my attention on, I've got to create a function that represents the cost. This problem isn't that bad. The one thing that sometimes trips students up is, do I tell you which side is supposed to be the special side? So then it doesn't matter where shit. Don't matter where shit. If somebody picks the y side to be the special side, and somebody else picks the x side to be the special side, the numbers they get will just be reversed. Could we have called x, y? Could I have called y, x? Could I have called y, h? Could I have called x, d? The letters don't mean shit. So here, you guys tell me, which, which side is the special side? Look at that, you guys agree I love it. So we'll say the top one is the one that gets, um, in this case, the special means it, it gets less expensive stuff. So for some reason, we're not worried about this side, right? The zombies are coming from this way. They don't come from that way too much, so we can use less expensive stuff. No idea what the economy would look like in a zombie. I guess, I don't know, go and analyze freaking Walking Dead or something. Um, Somebody help me out. What do we know about anything related to cost? So the cost is made up of what? So like that's the special side. So how much does that side cost? 15, 15, 15 per foot. And how long is it? So what's the total cost for that side? 15x. Now keep going. So the rest of them are... 30, so I get 30y plus 30x plus 30y. Is that cool? Pretend like you could read that. Let me write that again. 15x, and the rest of them are each 30 per, yes? Is that cool? You guys see that? That's 15, and the rest are 30 per. 15, 30 per. So I got 45x. Beautiful. 45x plus 61. I've got a cost function. What is still not quite right about it? It's got too many damn variables. variables. If only I had a relationship between x and y, I could get rid of one of those variables. I could write it in terms of the other one. Damn it. Oh, shit, that's right. So what can I do with this? Divided by x. Sure. Solve for either variable, whichever one you want to. So now I know what y is. In this problem, y has got to be 108 divided by x. It can't escape being that. So how can I rewrite the cost? What can I put in place of y? 108 over x. Now, what am I about to do with this? Now, we got a cost function. Why did we get a cost function? Because they asked me to do what? Minimize cost. So how do I minimize any function? Now that I've got the function I need, how do I minimize it? Is that what to zero? Derivative. You wish cost was zero. If you set this to zero, math is going to tell you, you, yeah, you need a negative side though. That's what it would tell you to try and set that to zero. So, yeah, so take its derivative instead. So what should I kind of do with that before I take its derivative? I multiply to 60. I can bring the x up if I want to, right? If that helps you with me. So again, simplify, simplify me. What's 60 times 108? 6480. 6480? Yeah. And then you can write this if you want to here. And then, like you just said, so I desperately want you guys, at, at the very least, I want you to know what you're trying to do. I'm going to have something I just tell you. The volume is 20. The, the, the number of cats is 7. And whatever. I'm going to tell you something. So you set up a function that represents what it tell you. Then you find, maximize this, minimum, whatever that is, focus all your attention on setting up a function that gives you that. In this case, it was cost. So this is the cost incurred in setting this up. I've got a cost function now. 
I could do calculus to it. So what's this guy's derivative? 45. Yeah, so we minus 6480 x to the negative 2. Now, and then I want to do what with that? So equal to 0. Now, real quick, where's the other place critical numbers come from? Where the function is undefined? Yeah, the function is undefined at 0 here, right? But I definitely don't want to make x 0 because that the reason that's a critical number is that gives me the least area. It gives me zero area. Yes? You guys kind of with me? So that's one extreme. No, I want the other. <clears throat> How do you solve this thing? You just get the 45 on the other side first. Yeah, well, yeah, so you, I would do this. Is that cool? Just add that over? Yes? Sure, okay. I'm open to whatever you guys want. There. Divide by 45. What's 6480 divided by 45? Yeah. Look at Jeff thinking ahead, making a problem that actually works. By the way, I, I, would, I wish somebody would be interested in. I did. Anyway, I'll get to it. It's a neat journey to figure out what numbers to use so that you end up at this kind of a place. Why is this nice? Break at 12. Does it have to be a nice number? Have you done homework where you got like the answer is two squared to three meters? Or of course you have. Because that's real life shit. So how did you get the x squared on the 45 side? Oh, just multiply it up. If I multiply, so both, multiply sides, both sides, multiply by both x. sides by x squared, it kills my fraction, right? Yeah. Another way to look at this real quick is if I divide both sides by 6480 right here, what's the negative power mean? Flip, right? So let me flip both sides. Don't I end up at the same place? All right, it doesn't matter how you get there. Okay, as long as you do. Now, what does this tell me? That tells me what this side has to be? So then I can figure out how long y has to be. But what's the question asking? me? Minimum cost. So right now, if I wanted to, I could just throw this number in for the cost function, right? Don't throw it. If you plug 12 in here, what's going to happen? It's going to give you zero. Of course it is. That's where it came from. I want to know what the cost is. You can just throw a 12 in there. You with me? Okay. Yeah, once you know the variable, you can throw it back in to figure out, in this case, the cost, because that's the function I've got. So let me, let me give you guys the answer key here for the... And again, this only goes up through number uh, 11. Yeah, we did 12 together earlier. So I think on this specific problem, yeah, I did figure out what y was just because I was curious. And then I found the cost by using this, see this? If you figure out what y is, then I've got a cost function right here. And the reason I wanted to do that, remind me, if I have a four-sided figure, what kind of shape will always maximize the area? Oops, sorry. What did I do? I didn't give it to you? Oh. There you go. They're both the same. I'm sorry. This is, oh, and I didn't give you one? You weren't here a second ago? I don't know. So, so real quick. This doesn't matter. You only agree that this won't be a square. 9 by 12, yeah. 
in terms of cost, this is really weird, but I want to see if anybody's with me. In terms of cost, it's a square. The total cost in this direction is 540. The total cost in this direction is 540. This, this might not make any sense to you. I, I mean, physically, it's not a square. Cost-wise, it's a square. So squares always minimize whatever the shit I'm talking about. Do you have to understand that for this class? No. Did Jeff even know that before 10 years ago? No, I figured that out a few years back. I'm like, but that's neat. It's always a square. I'll stop talking. Anything else you want to focus on from the practice final? Or do you see anything on here that looks like it's wrong? Or do you need a piece of chocolate left over from yesterday? Yeah. On 11, uh, the area bounded by curves. Both of the functions are at the back. Is that right? Like the chocolate. Number? Uh, 11. 11? Yeah, both functions are at the back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> so number 11, I've got the area supposed to be captured by those. What's the question? Uh, it's of X. Both of them are oh shit! Is it's correct? a typo. Uh, this should say G of X. Yeah. Yeah. This should say G of X. Yeah. I'm not trying to be tricky. What happened? Are you being really nice? Yeah. I'm Look at you. Nice. Tip your <laughs> tip your wait staff, everybody. What? Thank you. What? So tomorrow I'm going to bring some other goodies that you can partake in, right? If you feel like it, I, I'll take requests. You can request time is closed. Okay. I'm not sure, does anyone agree with this statement? Absolute extrema are much easier to find than local extrema. Okay. If you agree with that, that's awesome, because you really get the idea. Where could the absolute extrema occur? I already know two places to check before I do sh anything. At the end points. Because it could do like this and stop. That would be the maximum then. Is that a critical number? No. Because it looks like it's going to keep going up, but it stopped, and that would be the maximum, correct? So it could occur at the endpoints. And of course, what is the other place extrema can happen? Critical numbers. Good. So the very first step on this is find the critical numbers. And how do you find the critical numbers? Make it a river, and then set it equal to zero, or look where it's undefined, right? You with me? So is the derivative of that really hard? What do you have? What's the primary rule that's in effect for the before? Not chain. It's product is the ultimate. Eventually gonna use chain. But the initial thing is x times e to the stuff. That's product. So then you just do that. The great thing is, can e to a power ever equal zero? You cannot take a number, raise it to a power, and make it zero. You can't. If you were, if you raise it to the positive power, it's bigger, yes? If you raise it to a negative power, it becomes one over something. And what's the only way that a fraction can be zero is if the top is zero. Isn't the top always freaking one? Okay, that's why an exponential has an asymptote at zero. So what that means is, if you factor something and it's got an e to the power factor, that shit you can just ignore it because it cannot be zero. So has anybody taken that guy's derivative yet? Okay. What do you get? Do it again, sorry? 2x squared? Should be negative 2x squared, right? I got negative 2x squared e to the. Oh, yeah, negative 2x squared. Plus? Plus e to the negative x. Yes. Okay. <coughs> and then when I set that equal to 0.
If I got something equal to zero and it's got a bunch of powers on the x and all kind of weird shit, what do I do? I try to move it after it. Yes. What can come out of both? And then inside I get one minus two x squared. Is that cool? So can this ever be zero? So ignore him. He can't give me an answer. Right? No matter how much I throw him under spotlights, he just won't tell me. So how the hell do I do this? Is anybody very upset about that? No. Yeah, you know, subtract one, divide by negative two, square square root, blah, blah, blah. You're going to get two answers, correct? And I'll tell you right now, only one of them is the one you're going to use. What's going to determine which critical numbers you use? They have to be actually in the interval I'm considering, yeah? Okay. Is that right? So I got, uh, I, remember, I don't remember how I wrote it, 1 over rad 2 or something? How did I write it? Rad root 2 over tail. Yeah, I kind of did it like trig. 1 over rad 2 is root 2 over 2. So of course, root 2 over 2, by the way, does anyone know what the square root of 2 is? Yeah, 1.4, so root 2 over 2 is 0.7, which is above 0.5, so screw positive root 2 over 2. I'm not going to check it. I'm going to check negative root 2 over 2. That's in there. So what three places do I check? What three things do I plug into the function to see who wins? Negative 1, 0.5, and negative rad 2 over 2. And then I just see who wins. Who wins the biggest prize and who wins, who wins the prize first being the smallest? Yeah. That's why absolute streamer are kind of really nice. You just have to do a derivative equals zero, get the credit, and then just plug shit in. See who wins. There's no is it going up, is it coming, there's none of that stuff. It's just purely who's biggest, who's smallest. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Wow. Is that okay for that one? Uh, oh yeah, five, okay. So five, I give you the formula, right? Or do I? No, I don't. So I'm being evil. Too bad for you guys. If I gave you number five on that test, I would give you the formula because I know not all of us know the formula for the volume of a cone. Does anyone know the formula for the volume of a cone? You put it on the interview. I did. I did. Thank you for being honest. So it's just a cylinder, and if I chop a cone out of it. That's one third of what it used to be. So, what's the immediate problem with this? Because I want to do what to this eventually? I want to do capitalist to this. So, what kind of sucks? The number of variables? Too damn high. If I want to get a relationship between R and H so that I can replace one of them with a function of the other one. So then I only have one variable. So we've done a problem like this before. Can you draw a cone? Yeah, so I always start with a circle and then... How tall is the cone? 10. And how, what's the radius of the cone? 3. But it's got what in it? Water. I say water weird, so it's you know, try to figure out different ones. Got some H2O. So draw the H2O in somewhere. Right? So there's the H2O. So how high is the H2O? I have no idea. Nope. Don't bring the snapshot in. As I'm pouring water in, I have no idea where it is at any point. So it's H, and what's the radius of the water? R. I'm gonna call it R. So the cone itself, its dimensions don't change, but the water, where the water is, changes. So I have to give them variable expressions, because isn't the height changing over time? Isn't the radius changing over time? Yes. Does anyone see how I can get a relationship between R and H? Because what do I actually have happening here? Similar triangle. So big radius is to small radius as big height is to small height. That's how similar shit works. 
That's the way I always do it. There's other ways to make the proportionals, but who cares? You could do big shit to big shit is equal to small shit to small shit. Does anyone see how these are the same? Okay, good. Because they are. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Now, can somebody tell me? I don't tell you this is a problem. Can you tell which variable do you want left alive? Why H? And it tells me a value for H. So there's two reasons I want H to survive. So I don't want to, I don't want to kill R. I want to, in the middle of the night, come and replace it, right? Invasion of the body snatchers kind of thing going on. They're already here. Okay, so, so let me remind you what we just said. We want H to stay alive. Do you see how that means I want to solve for R? Because then I can replace R. That, how do you solve this for R? This is R, I almost solve for R. How would I solve this for R? Yeah, I just multiply the H up. So I get R equals 3H over 10. Is that cool? Yeah. Or you could do this and cross multiply and then divide by 10. Whatever way you do it, you're going to get 3H over 10. And what can I do with that? Put it in the bottom. I'll tell you what to do with that, Jeff. Be quiet. Yeah, put it in because now I know what R is. And do you see what effect it has? It has to live in this cone. Therefore, R and H can't be whatever the shit they want to be because <coughs> R depends on H. If I go higher, doesn't R get bigger? So there must be a relationship to it, and we figured it out. So if I plug that in, square this business, is that? And the rest of it you can see. I don't know. Is that? Once I do this, then I do calculus and I throw shit in. You know, the rest of it's kind of boring. I don't know if you do. I mean, you can simplify this, yes. What's 3 squared? Divided by 3. What's h squared times h? And what's 10 squared? Yeah, so you get this. And now I can do calculus. When you do calculus, what's going to have to happen here? When you take this guy's derivative, you have to multiply by dHdt. You got to do implicit, right? Maybe. So what kills me is every now and again I'll say something I can I can just tell in people's faces. You have no idea what the hell I was talking about, but you don't say anything, so I'm not sure what to say. Yes. Can you show the structure? Say again. Okay, so right, right here you mean? Yeah. Okay, so if you want to be more explicit, what's the only piece of this I have to do something to immediately? Yeah. yeah. What do you get when you square all that business? Over 100. Over 100, yeah. Okay, so now I got, what's on top? 9h squared times h times pi over 3 times 100 is on the bottom. Is that cool? So doesn't the 3 go into 9? And what's h squared times h? That's what we got up here, yeah. Yeah, so you can do it step by step. One reason why I kind of do this fast a little bit is because if you just do it step by step, you'll get there. Yeah. And now, what do I do with this? And just to go back to the original, what is it they tell me? What do I know? I know the value of what? Where'd it go? There. I know at a time when h is 5, so I know h is 5. Uh, what else did they tell me? Being filled with water at the rate of this. So what's this? What's this? What's the top? Good. So what's that geometrically? Centimeters cubed, right? So what is that geometrically? Cubic centimeters. I like volume. And what's the bottom? So that's dVdt, yes? That's the rate of change of volume is two centimeter cubic centimeters per second. So dVdt is, I forgot what it is, two 
H is 5, dV dt is 2. And what's the question they're asking me? See? No? Not really, sort of, but how quickly the what is what? Water is rising. Water is rising, and that would be dH dt, yes? So the question is, what is dH dt? So summarize what they tell you. Now I can just throw shit in. Once you do calculus, you can throw a dVTT in, you can throw the H in, and then you can solve for dHTT. Is that all right? Okay. Oh, that's where it went to. I just brought paper, chocolate, and tea. So you, you, I, I don't have anything. It's all based on what you guys want to talk about. So if you have any other questions, if you have any other problems you want to look at, it's up to you. Yes? Um, oh, Logan's yeah. um, we do, uh, You can call him hospital, dude. That's can we fine. do uh, Oh, all right. The thing with 8A, what's the only kind of thing that locutals can be used for? Zero over zero, infinity over infinity, right? Or anything that you can write in that form. Locutals is all over it. Is this in that form? No. What's the top? Three. So it's automatically not indeterminate, which must mean it's determinate. So the top is positive 3. The bottom is approaching 0. But as it's approaching 0, are all the numbers positive or negative? Positive. positive. So it's positive over small positive, so it's going to positive infinity. Does that make sense? Yeah. So L'Hopital, don't immediately do L'Hopital just because they give you a limit with a ratio. What do you always do when they ask you a limit? And they say, figure out the limit. What's the first thing you do? Throw that shit in there. Because maybe, and you've seen this for me, maybe once you plug it in, you're done. Right? There was that example with the E stuff on that one problem. I can't remember where it was. Test tube or whatever. We just had to plug it in. You go, oh, okay, I get numbers, and I'm done. Right? This one, you don't get numbers, but it's not any determinant. It's some kind of infinity, because the bottom's getting really small. No, you would just say, this is in the form 3 over infinity, the bottom is positive, so it's positive infinity, bam. So if you did something like that, believe it or not, that would be you. Bottom is positive, it's going to 3, I'm sorry, 3 over 0, it would be better, Jeff. 3 over 0, the bottom is always positive, so it's going to positive infinity, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, guys, guys, guys. All right. L'Hopital's is an example of something I can do in a certain situation. Do you remember before we learned L'Hopital's, didn't we have indeterminate forms? Remember we would factor, or we'd do all kind of weird shit, yes? What's the only time I have to do more work when the limit starts off in what form? So, all right, so if I, if I ask you this, are you going to do anything weird? Are you going to do low results? Are you going to factor? Are you going to do anything? What are you going to do? <clears throat> Plug it in. What do you get? There you go. So if it is not indeterminate, you should be able to determine the answer immediately. You shouldn't have to do any factoring. You shouldn't have to do L'Hopital's. None of that. In fact, L'Hopital's only works if it's indeterminate. If I try to use L'Hopital's when it isn't, I could get the wrong answer. <clears throat> so what if it's with this instead?
What form is that in? Zero over zero. Back in the day, you'd have to factor this. Some of you guys don't like cubes, so what can you do now? You can do the hospital. Dude. Hospital dude. What do you get if you apply Locutus almost rule? On the top you get, come on, nice. 3x squared, yes, over 2x. Does that reduce? What's the reduce? So you get, right? So now that you know Locutus, you don't have to do cubic factoring for these kind of problems anymore. Ooh, okay. So, still not how to factor the damn thing, but I'm, yes. Is that, real quick, I'm sorry, does that make sense? If it's not indeterminate, I, I love this, sh this is the best thing ever. If it's not indeterminate, it's determinate. I should be able to determine the answer immediately. I shouldn't have to do any special shit. If it's indeterminate, oh shit, do I factor it? Can I use low pitals? Do I flip the thing? You no, know, then I got more work to do, because it, at the moment, I cannot determine the answer. Sorry, who had it? Oh. Uh, I was just wondering if you have to do six. Oh, did I not do six? Did I do six? Oh, I did do six, but I did it very quickly. Yeah. I was getting tired. Okay. Uh, let's see if Jeff, let's see if past Jeff got six right. I'm going to rewrite this like this, right? Why do the one half? Flush. Okay. Implicit. How's it work? Yep, yep. Yeah, so the one half comes down. Y to the negative one half times. Y prime, good, chain rule, because the inside is an implicit function of X, so gotta multiply by its derivative. Good, past Jeff, so far so good. Anybody done with that first dude? Yep, because he's just one little dude, I did him. What about this guy? Product rule. So it'll be minus three derivative of X times Y. Here's where you guys are gonna make a mistake. Minus, 3x, what's the derivative of y? Holy shit, okay. okay. Equals, what's the derivative of secant y? Secant y tangent y, y prime plus one of x. So now, of course, your whole focus goes to doing what? Get all your y primes on one side. Why did the three and negative three y squared? Three to the one of the After the first y prime. All right, so this is a product rule, right? So I do the derivative of x times y. And then minus three times x derivative of y. It's just product rule. It's just product rule. Yeah. So I have to take the derivative of x. And then I have to take the derivative of y, product rule. And now, what terms don't have y prime? Yeah, this guy and this guy. So it's kind of smart to just add this guy over and subtract that guy over, right? So I'll get 1 half y to the negative 1 half times y prime. Minus 2 secant y tangent y times y prime minus 3xy prime equals 3y plus 1 over x. Is that cool? So I just added 3y, subtracted 2, blah. Now the reason we do that is because now what can I do? I can take a y prime out in front of a bunch of shit. And I'm not going to rewrite, I already wrote it once. And then you just divide by all the shit. Is that cool? Okay, okay. So I just saw where it was going, so I just wrote down what it was going to go to. Yeah. Can you do AB? 8B 
be. Oh, this one. Okay, so. <laughs> yes, I know. Those of you who don't like trick, uh, it's going to be on there. Just a warning, guys. There could very well be a trig identity problem that you have to know an identity for. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And again, remind me, how many guys are planning on taking Calc 2? The most immediate thing you can do for yourself besides reviewing derivatives and intervals before the class starts is bone the shit up on your trig because there's a bunch of trig in the first chapter you do. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to warn you. Hey, you got to go in there knowing your trig. Right? Right. Um, what was I doing? I forgot. Number eight. B. All right. What form is this in? What's cotangent of pi over 2? Good. What's cosine of pi over 2? Nope. Cosine like x. Pi over 2 is y axis, 0. So that's, that's all you need to know. Cosine like x. It's happy. It's 1 here. 0. There's no x piece to this. That's all the freaking sine and cosine <coughs> are. Um, so that's 0 over 0. Does it look to tell us help? Yes. So just attack it with look to now you got to remember what the derivative cotangent is, and you got to realize that the chain rule up there is. You kind of with me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just that trick. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. Um, but yeah, you got to break that stuff down. Yeah. So the negative cosecant. Yeah. Negative cosecant. Square. Square. Yeah. X over two times. Chain rule. One half, right? Through the inside is one half. Do you with me? Over two x, right? Because what's the derivative of pi squared? Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Is that all right? If that's not enough, I did all the answer on the answer key. So yeah. Oh, this guy. Yeah, look at this guy. Oh, Jeff, what the hell? Who who hurt you, Jeff? It's just, you know, you get these big ass numbers when you do your U sub changes. So when you see a problem like this, uh, instead of not doing it and hoping I don't notice, is there an obvious function stuck somewhere? No, I mean, that's what I'm asking is what's yeah. U going to be? So, yeah, all this stuff is stuck inside of a radical. So the first level of thing you try when it's obviously not just a direct integral, like it's not integral of sine x, you're like, damn it, is let u equal the thing that seems to be stuck somewhere. And then what's that derivative? What are you hoping happens then for the derivative? You're hoping that it's a multiple of this thing, because then that would be your du. You just have to make the numbers work, and we can do that easy. So what is the derivative of x before? Yeah, 4x cubed minus 18x, which is? A multiple of that. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? You have a one half on the outside. Yeah, exactly. You have a one half on the outside, so you could double that thing so that it could become your dx. So then you just get the integral of u to the one half. But your limits, how do you figure out your new limits for u? No. Well, when yeah. x is 1, u is going to be 1 minus 9 plus 123. You plug it into Wait, the original? No. Yeah, you do that. Well, what did we let u equal? We let u equal this, yeah? Yeah, because you know the relationship between u and x. So if you know x information, that means you know u information because there's a relationship. Is that right? And again, I already did the problem. It's on the, it's on the answer key, so I don't necessarily want to do it over again. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You had a question. Oh. Uh, did you have a question about this? Uh, Different. It was the last problem. Okay. Oh, the last problem. What's up? I was just wondering about uh, how is the derivative of pi over 2 one, one half? Pi over 2. What? Where are um, we? Oh. Here, x no, no, no. My bad. Oh, it isn't. So, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant, yes? Mm -hmm. Square. Is the inside function more than just x? Yes, so it has to have its turn. What's the derivative of x over 2? 1 half. What's the derivative of 1 half x? Oh, wait, because you can bring that up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you go over number 3. 3? Oh, yeah, okay. The very first thing you want to do on number three. D 
you see what I asked you? The first question, why do I not have to do any calculus? Because I gave you the position function. You just got to throw a point A in. Who cares? If I give you the position function, what do you do to it to get the velocity function? Take the derivative. And how do I get the acceleration function? Take another. So the very first thing, if I give you a problem like this, we're talking about velocity, position, etc. Very first thing you do is just attack the position. Just take a derivative, take another. Now you got s of t, v of t, a of t. And the first uh, two questions are easy, at least. They're just plug and shove, correct? If I have a velocity function, I can just plug a 1.2 and get part b. What about part c? What do you know if it's not moving? Velocity is zero. Do you have a v of t at this point? Do you have a velocity function? Yes, because that's one. Of, that's the first thing you would do. So I want to take the velocity function equal to zero. And then I can figure out what time that happens, and then I can throw that shit into the acceleration. You guys see what I'm saying? So if I say it's not moving, whatever the velocity function is, it must be zero. It's not going anywhere. I can solve for time, and then I can do whatever the hell else your crazy-ass math teacher asks you. Okay. How about part D? This is the funny thing. How do I maximize any function? No, definitely not. That would make the function zero. How's that a maximum? Well, a maximum profit is zero. Oh, shit. Set the derivative equal to zero, right? Now, in this specific instance, it's a second derivative of x. It's an x. Who gives a shit? Do you have a velocity function at this point? Yes. I want to maximize. Take its derivative. We already did it. Set it equal to zero. Does that make And then. And you plug that back in for velocity. Is that all right? Okay, so it, that's the point I was trying to make with number one on the last practice test was if I'm asked to do calculus to a function, I get that function and I do the, it doesn't matter if I had to take a derivative to get to what they wanted. It doesn't matter. Once I got the function, I do the process. Newton's method, uh, finding maximum. I create the function I need and then I do the calculus to it. So to maximize a function, I need to get its derivative set equal to zero. It doesn't matter that it happens to be a second derivative of position. Who gives a shit? I don't know if you guys understand. So I create a velocity function by taking the derivative of position. It is now its own function. I can then ask you to maximize it. You take its derivative. Oh, that happens to be acceleration. Well, great. We already did the derivative. Set equal to zero. Maybe. Just make sure you guys really understand. So if you look at the answer key, the first thing I did on number, what was it again? Where'd it go? Three. Uh, here, first thing I did, bam, bam, bam. That's given to me, one derivative is velocity, second derivative is acceleration, and then I can answer all the damn questions. I got all my little functions to look at. Maybe. So you can see on part D, I did the derivative of velocity, which I already did. Set equals zero, got the time, and then plugged it back in. Maybe. I got my critical number, and then I plugged it back in. Did we build it? Did you? Or you go 2C? Which one? 2C. 2C. I did this. Too bad for you because you like it. Let's see. I don't think so, no. So you're lucky. So 2C. What's this one primarily all about? 2C. Product. Product. Yeah. Do you agree with me that all the functions involved here are easy? <clears throat> and with product, will I just focus on one and then the other one? Okay. So the product, I would do the derivative of this times this plus this times the derivative of that. What would the derivative of this piece involve? Yeah. Some of you guys, uh, I don't know, I don't even want to say anything. Some of you guys somehow rewrite this with LN and do weird shit. No, there's no need for that. Let it be E. E is beautiful. E is the best little dude ever. Right? Because its derivative is itself, and then chain rule says, oh, the inside gets a turn. Is that all right? I don't know if that's enough. Did you have a specific question about how the answer worked out? No? Okay. And there you go, 2D earlier, right? I don't know. Oh, yeah, we did 2D. 2D? Yeah. It's basically just throw x squared in and then multiply by the derivative of x squared. Yeah.
should all get a shirt, even if you don't have to. Say, I took out closer this summer. Be nice to me. So it's not easy to do that. I understand that, isn't it? I understand. Yeah, yeah. You'll start to have weird dreams. I don't know if anybody had any weird dreams yet. Interval symbols chase you. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Four seven number. What are you doing? Is that my stapler? Four seven number. I'm sorry. Eleven. I was able to do that, but uh, I was just curious. So whenever we have a function that's set equal to zero, we can get the maximum, right? Uh, a maximum value. Yes. But uh, uh, I mean, you get a critical number, but then you have to check to see if it's a max or a min. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I got this uh, critical number, just 75. But then I plug it in, and I got the area. But uh, I, I did a uh, here to do it up, I sketch up the area. Yes. But I. Uh, how come this one is like m much more area than this one? I tried to. Now, double check and make sure that these all add up to be the allowed mm. amount of fencing, do they? Uh, what is this? Uh, 115. So it was uh, the total fencing. 115. So that's yeah. 230, this and this, plus five of these. What are each of these? Uh, 127. What's five? Well, five times 127 is 635. So that's already more oh. than you're allowed. Yeah. <clears throat> so you got to be careful. That's what happened mm -hmm. to a few people. Yeah. You have to be careful about what you have left over. So I'll identify this first, five times that, and then whatever's left, cut it in half. Just to be sure you don't go over the seven, whatever it was. That's the only way the air could be bigger is if you gave yourself more fencing. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to test fractions because I didn't have the time in the morning if you Yeah, yeah. No, I'm okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No, all good. Um, are you going to be able to have this rated by tomorrow so I can see like a pedicles in the morning. Uh yeah. If you shoot me an email and ask me for it. Okay. Yeah. Well I'll be there in the morning. Yeah. Well it's just so I make sure to, to grade it. So it's right. Oh yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Here can I kind of send cool. it to you. Thank um it's a little bit because I was I did all the ones I could do on my own and then I had like I'm with the interest so the questions aren't like all as long as they're there somewhere I'm with on the test I'm pretty sure I got the right answer here. I didn't like specifically put my um, initial guess, but I put it on the graph right here. And then I plugged my, my value into both the equations to get my y value, just to make sure that they're... Oh, okay, okay. okay. I just needed to see exactly my what you were plugging guess. into okay. the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can do corrections on that and just do... Uh, see, this isn't quite right because the cosine doesn't go at <laughs> 0 at 1. It goes 0 at 1.5, like pi over 2. Okay. So that was off, uh, and I just didn't see what it was you were plugging into yeah. the calculator. And then I also had on number 2, which was the area question, I set it up the same way that you talked about in the beginning of the class. Uh, here. So, uh, oof, then you do weird things. Okay. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, that really threw you off. Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. So you took out an x plus, x plus 2. 6 minus x. And then somehow... And then I came in for oh, over here. Oh, over here. Oh, here. I was like, how the yeah. hell did you go from here to here? That's why I put a question mark. So you, you came here. An X was and then here. Two. Oh. And then I plugged yeah. the two back in to this equation. Okay, okay. All right. You're making corrections? Let me see. Because that would take you to... Yeah, that wouldn't quite get you to 100. So you making corrections? Yeah. Um, what would that do? Let's see. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sixteen, eight, ninety-two. So this would have been a ninety-two, and I don't know what your curved grade would be. It would probably be ninety-seven, I think. And then if you make corrections, I'll have on and top I have of that. One last thing. Sorry. Oh wait, did you have? Wait, I'm sorry, I messed up. 
Uh, 92, and then you had some bonus, right? Yeah. The plus two would be 90, uh, 94. That would take this to a 99, and if you make corrections, you get up to 100. Okay, one more thing. Um, on the immigration, I got to right here, and then I had the one half here, and you're saying don't the one half, even though this needed to get multiplied by two. Oh, when you integrate this, doesn't it have a two thirds that's supposed to be on here? Okay. See that? Yeah. Because yeah, you have yeah. to divide by the new power. All right. So that was me quickly just saying that's not the number you want there. Not really saying you don't need the one half there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. I gotta get this guy. Um, say one more time. Oh, we're gonna count the final in place of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, 